So we'll be tracking the big takeaway, the outcome of that meeting between the United States and China. Let's focus on what's happening on the ground in Ukraine. Ukraine, of course, has been putting up a fight back that nobody expected, which is why this war has now entered day 19. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky also paid a visit to wounded Ukrainian soldiers at a hospital. Remember that he's stationed in Kiev. He's repeated that time and again. And uh, he was seen there visiting all of these soldiers, handing out medals as well, even as Russia has continued its assault on Ukrainian cities. Air raid alerts were sounded in 19 of 24 Ukrainian regions. A school in the city of Mykolaiv was also hit by a Russian missile. Russia has targeted key Ukrainian facilities, particularly air defense systems with several airfields and air bases in Ukraine being completely decimated. The Beshiv village of Ukraine also came under a Russian missile attack where multiple houses and buildings were damaged. Ukrainian forces have shot down four planes and three choppers on Sunday. Zelensky has reiterated his demand saying that there should be a no-fly zone imposed, that the skies above Ukraine must be closed. He is in fact warned that if skies are not closed, it will be a matter of time before Russian missiles hit NATO territory and and allies of NATO like Poland. Zelensky has also confirmed that Ukraine has been able to evacuate nearly 1,25,000 people through humanitarian corridors and now aims to send aid to Mariupol, which has come under Russian attack. Important about today, about war. We will win. Glory to Ukraine. We were able to evacuate nearly 120,000 people using humanitarian corridors. The main task now is Mariupol. Our diplomatic effort is focused on aid to reach the city. So the bombing continues, the war continues on day 19. But the focus is also going to be on diplomacy, on dialogue. Zelensky and Putin have been having, in fact, at least the representatives have been indulging in dialogues. Today, it's likely that amid the parallel assault on Kyiv, you're going to be seeing the fourth round of talks between Ukraine and Russia. And this is a meet that everyone's going to be watching out for because Zelensky has been seeking a direct meeting with, in fact, uh, uh, with uh, Putin directly to discuss exactly what can happen and what is the outcome of this invasion to negotiate, which Zelensky has said he's ready for. The delegations from the two countries have met four times before, including face-to-face -face talks between the foreign ministers. It hasn't yielded any results. The only positive outcome of the peace talks so far has been the creation of a humanitarian corridor for civilians and also a brief ceasefire at certain locations. The last round of peace talks took place in Turkey, where foreign ministers of the two countries met with the Turkey, uh, Turkish foreign minister also present there as a mediator. Ukrainian President Zelensky has called this time for Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett to intervene, saying that Jerusalem can be a constructive place to hold uh, neutral Ukraine-Russia talks. And here on India Today, we've been constantly getting you what the situation is in the capital city of Kiev. Russia is trying to enter the city, which means suburbs, cities on the outskirts of Kiev, are in very, very bad shape. India Today's reporters have been travelling there to get you a first-hand account of what's happening. Here's what Rajesh Pavar, who's been reporting bravely from the front line, found in Bucha city. I'm right now standing in front of Babaniar Memorial. It is a memorial in the, in the memory of those Jews which were killed by the Nazis in the Second World War. Almost 18% population of Kyiv during the Second World War in the late 1930s was almost 18% of the total population. And these people were massacred by the Nazis and mass graves existed in this area of Babaniar. And this memorial was made to commemorate these people who were killed by the Nazis. There was a claim by the Ukraine that recently a missile has destroyed this memorial or has caused some kind of damage. And they, then they blame the Russian army of destroying the heritage sites, historical sites of Kyiv city. But here we do not see any kind of damage or any kind of bomb in this area which has landed a missile. Just behind this, a few meters away, up about 200 meters away, as if you can see, is a TV tower. Maybe it was targeted and maybe something fell between these two things, between the memorial and the TV tower, which we cannot see right now. 
if you, if you see behind me, this is a new memorial at Babiar, which was made to commemorate the the the, the barbaric uh, murdering of Jews during the Second World War by the Nazis. And this is a new memorial which was made by the government after Ukraine became an independent country. Ukrainian government uh, alleged that Russians are destroying historical sites and they gave an example of Babiar that Russian missile or a bomb fell here. If you see towards little away, just 100 meters from here is this TV tower, a huge TV tower, which is a communication center and becomes a legitimate military target. Probably it was being targeted and something fell near it. But as far as Babiar is concerned, I have gone all around and I've shown it on camera. It's totally safe. I'm standing in front of a TV tower inside the Kyiv city, which was targeted by a Russian missile a few days ago. But this, uh, this missile missed its target just by about 25 to 30 meters. And the result was the TV tower is totally safe and standing. But see what happened to the nearby area. You see this pole? This pole is even totally black, it's all gone. And a similar pole was there in the far distance, if you see. And see its portion, other part of the pole went so far and near the car, if you can see, lying on the road. So this is the kind of damage it has done. And if you look around, the buildings have also been damaged. Bring it this end. And look at this car, the state of this car. This car has been badly damaged too, totally. So anything in this area was totally blasted, but it missed its main target, which was the TV tower, just by 25 meters. So this is the kind of precision today's military technologies need if they want to hit the target without any collateral damage. I am right now crossing the metro station of Brestreka, which was hit by a Russian missile uh, a few days ago. The whole area is in shambles, a lot of damage, and we are not allowed to film here. So, but I'm trying to do it from a car. I want to show you a lorry, the way it has been hit, that it is burnt. It can be seen now. See the situation. This is how a lot of debris all around and the whole area is in shambles. And this is Metro Station Brestreka inside the Kyiv city. It is right inside the Kyiv city. And this is a missile, a, a massive missile, probably a cruise missile, which hit this area a couple of days ago. Now, because of all of, in fact, the airstrikes that have been conducted in the cities of Ukraine and in the capital city of Kyiv, where a warning has been sounded, many thousands have fled the city. Very few stay back and they've moved to metro stations, which have now turned into bomb shelters and into bunkers. Geeta Mohan gets you this report from one such bunker. And it's heartbreaking images to see families displaced, left with nothing, with just backpacks of all their belongings moving now into these bunkers. right behind me and you can see it has become home to a lot of people so this is the only safety that many have found a safe place metro over here Living over here to find some warmth is also to ensure that this. On the ground training of the civilians here who have joined up in the Territorial Defense Force, been split into groups and then being taught how to enter territories occupied by the enemy. <laughs> Two groups are ready. 
How is the deployment? How does the deployment take place? Справа в тому, що у нас є безпосередні блокпости неподалік від нашого тренувального загону. Вони туди вже люди виходять буквально з першого дня. Ми як заїхали сюди вперше, то одразу стали і почали нести службу. Around the training base there are some points on which guys are already working. As soon as they are ready, as they are finishing all the levels of the training, they are going on the first and the red block post. The best of them are going, coming together and going on some missions. Okay, so the best of them go for missions and others are sent to check Hide behind bushes, buildings, whatever they can find and move. Ensure that they have all eyes around. That's why you see one person who is always who always has his back to the team and the, the one leading then leads them to the uh, to, to where they have to go. So they're being trained in how to encircle the enemy from various places and then attack, launch their attack. A very significant and important training because these very young people from the community, young, old from the community, are going to be sent to various check posts and should there be infiltration by the Russians, this is the tactic that they have to employ to ensure that they encircle the enemy and take them down. In one of the undisclosed locations here in the Kiev Blast, Gita Mohan reporting for India Today. We'll continue getting you more such ground reports detailing what's really playing out right now in Ukraine. But one of the big headlines that emerged from the war torn country over the weekend is the abduction of a mayor. This is from a city called Militopol, where we have footage uh, where allegedly Russian troops are abducting the mayor. It sparked off massive protests in Militopol, with thousands of locals coming together saying, release our mayor now. The war in Ukraine is raging on for nearly 20 days now. Russia has repeatedly assured the international community that it's not targeting civilians, despite contrary reports from the ground. This is the moment mayor of a city called Melitopol, Ivan Fedorov, is abducted, allegedly by Russian soldiers. The video shows Russian soldiers taking the mayor out of a building with his head covered. Ukraine's Internal Affairs Ministry confirmed that the mayor was abducted after he refused to cooperate with the Russians. There's no information about Mayor Fedorov's whereabouts. His city is in Russian control. Ukrainian President Zelensky condemned the abduction, calling it a sign of Russia's weakness. Today in Melitopol, the invaders captured mayor of the city, Ivan Fedorov, a mayor who courageously defends Ukraine and the people of his community. Obviously, this is a sign of the weakness of the invaders. The kidnapping has sparked a flurry of protests. Thousands of Melitopol residents marched to the administration building, demanding the release of the mayor. According to Ukrainian media, Russian forces entered Melitopol on the second day of the invasion. Since then, the mayor had led several rallies with thousands of attendees. On March 5th, Fedorov reportedly said that the situation in the city was getting difficult due to a food and medicine shortage. The mayor also called for a humanitarian corridor to let the residents leave, which was denied by Russian forces. Bureau Report, India Today. Welcome back. For over two weeks now, with the war raging on in Ukraine, journalists, including ours here on India Today, have been bravely reporting from the front lines, getting you, the viewers, every update you need to know. And tragically, an American journalist was killed, another wounded amid shelling by Russian forces. Brent Renard, a 51-year-old journalist and award-willing filmmaker, was a former employee at the New York Times. He was killed amid heavy shelling by Russian forces. Brent and his colleague, Juan Arredondo, went to film refugees who were leaving Irpin when they were shot after crossing a checkpoint in Irpin, which is very close to Kiev. It's on the outskirts. Brent Renaud was shot in the neck 
and was reported dead immediately. His colleague, Juan Arredondo, was transported in an ambulance to the Okmadid hospital after being wounded. The killing of the journalist comes amid ferocious fighting between Russian and Ukrainian forces, which has been going on for the last 19 days. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.